Okay, so this is a Know Your Ingredients video for stage and film makeup for Maron's Paradise AQ makeup palette. Um, the one I told you to get is this one that comes with basically the primary colors. There's others that come in all kinds of amazing colors. Um, primaries just sort of allow you to mix any color you'd like, which is kind of what we want to be able to do. I've also got an assortment of brushes here to kind of play with some things. So I'm just going to show you a little bit about this product and how to work with it. Maron Paradise AQ is a water activated makeup, which means you need water to activate it. So in addition to my normal, you know, paper towel at the start of my workspace, I've got two cups of water here. I'm going to use one to clean the brush and I'm going to use, actually I'm going to use that one to clean the brush. I'm going to use one to clean the brush and one to pick up clean water. And this is a good watercolor, this is a good watercolor makeup practice for any type of watercolor that you work with. But so this, this paint is essentially going to work like watercolor. Um, just like um, watercolor, it's all about controlling the product. Uh, so you have to like, this is like, these are like little pans and they're dry and you can't just pick them up. They don't really work. You have to get them wet. So we're gonna start with this red color here and I've got some water on my brush and I got quite a bit of water. You can see the second I hit it, the color activates. Now, if I just do that, if I just activate it like that, I get this, um, it's really watery, and if I try to blend that around, it gets really streaky. So I'm actually gonna wipe that off. Um, when I'm applying makeup to my face, if I wanna start with a base color, you wanna make sure that it gets on really, really um, thick so that it doesn't look really streaky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm taking all that, that water that I, that I put in here and I'm working it with a brush until it starts to get really creamy. So you wanna make sure that you do that or else you'll have really, really streaky makeup. You can kind of test on yourself. All right, you see the difference there between what I first put on and that got really wet. So it's an incredibly like thick product now. Now I can put that on and get a really nice little blend with it. And now when I come out to the edge, I don't get like watery bits. It just sort of starts to feather. And that's great for putting a base coat on. And then you would clean your brush here, and use the paper. It's hard to keep your brushes clean. Expect to have to change your water a lot. It's okay if it's a little bit pink, but it doesn't wanna have like makeup on it again. This is how you get stuff like that where that's not exactly clean, Tori. Okay, so there's a couple things we might want to do now. Like, let's say we want to blend it out. Like, I want to, like, blend the red into my skin tone. So if I want to do that, I want a wet brush, but not a, like, very damp brush. So I've, like, wiped this off. So the brush is just damp. Um, and I can use that to then pull. And you see the second the makeup gets wet, it activates and starts to move around. So it can very easily get too wet too quickly. Okay, now I can, you can see I've got too much so I can't get a perfect blend. What you might want to do in that case is take a brush that has no makeup on it and just get some water. The red is a very like pigmented color and just use that. So I recommend when blending to lay one color down, another color down in areas and then use water to blend them together. Let's now play with blending another color into this. Let's say, let's use blue for fun. Um, it's not gonna give you a great purple in between, but let's go ahead and try, see what that looks like. I'm actually gonna take off my watch so that we can see what that looks like without my watch in the way, even though my watch is purple. All right. Um, I've got a little bit of red still left in this brush. If, you, if I really, really needed to go get it clean, I would need to go um, probably wash it out. So it's kind of helpful. This kit comes with like one brush. You can see I use it a lot. Um, just kidding, I've never used it. The plastic's still on it. Okay, so like I just did with the red, you really need to work the water in. You'll feel it, it'll start to get creamy. It'll want to start, if you want to know what it should feel like, it should feel like maybe heavy cream in the pan like that kind of thickness, or maybe like a thin lotion, and that's when you've got it like creamy enough. I would say this is still a little bit wet, but I'm gonna go ahead and work with it. 
So, honey, I'm recording. Right? Yeah. You didn't tell me that. I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. I told you before you got in the shower. Okay, so there I've got some blue kind of blended in, and that's not really great, is it? It's it's sort of okay. Um, good watercolor practice. Use the dirty water, get the color out. Clean water. Okay. Now I'm trying to. What I'm trying to do here is just get all the product off my brush, and then just use the wet brush to try to blend together. So there we've got blue blended to red. And there's other things you can do to clean that up. I'm using a dry mop here. This is like a little, um, you could use like your uh, powder blush, powder or blush brush to do this. So there's no water on this. So when I use this, it's just gonna kind of feather the product around and smooth it out. The makeup on my hand is still a little bit wet. So when I feather that around, going back and forth this way, like against the direction I have brush, brush strokes. But don't do this with a wet brush, it'll just get really smeary. But this is just picking up the water and smoothing it out. So now I have a really nice blend going on on my hand. Um, yeah, that's the product. Make sure you work it in, get it really, really creamy. Make sure that you um, don't use too much water, but you do have to use water. You can use dry brushes when the makeup is still wet. Anytime you hit it with water again, it's gonna reactivate. Um, and then all the same like brush tricks apply. You know, I've got this super thin, like tiny brush here. I tend to use this one with this makeup for getting really thin lines. And I still, even though I've got a tiny brush, still need to paste it up so it gets nice and creamy. And I could, you know, draw a line around my hand or a smiley face. You might also want to know what happens if I try to say put white on top of this. So just like anything else, any other color, I have to paste this up till it's nice and creamy. So the, the trick here in the battle you're fighting is that it's, it's water activated, which is great. And so if you've got it nice and thick and creamy and you work with it really quickly, you can get the white to very nicely sit on top of your darker colors underneath. But if you start to work it, I'm just gonna like draw, I don't know, let's, let's put like a little flower right here. I'm running out of paint on my thing. I'm working it in, I'm working it in. You can see as I work it in to draw my little flower, the white mixes in with the paint underneath it. So if you want something like this, you need to work in short, quick brush strokes because you're gonna run out of, of white on your brush. That one's okay, but the more I work it in, oh, yep, that, there it is, now it's starting to lift. So you need to be careful working with white. My recommendation is to start with your lightest areas and build up in darkness, which is the exact same thing you do with watercolor. However, unlike watercolor, these colors are opaque to, enough to build them on top of each other. It's just that you will, with the water, you'll activate, start activating the makeup underneath it. And what's super fun about this is once it dries, um, it's not quite dry yet, but once it dries, you don't need to powder it. Um, it dries in such a way that it doesn't feel like much on your skin, not heavy and oily like the makeup we use in class, and you can touch it and it doesn't come off. Maybe a little bit of color gets on your fingers. So that is the Paradise AQ, just like get to know you tutorial. I recommend playing with it, especially before you jump into, um, you jump into these projects, figure out what it is you're gonna do. You're also gonna have like difficult things to deal with like fur 
I'm gonna show you how to kind of deal with fur. One of the brushes I have on my kit, I actually cut um, into it to make a, like a little shaggy fur edge. But one of the ways I recommend doing fur, because you're gonna have areas of fur, like colored areas that like blend into each other with the animal makeup product project, like a tiger's got like orange and black, right? So you can put the two areas next to each other like that. And pretend it's orange and black or some color, some animal that has blue and brown fur that blend into each other. And then you can kind of use the brush, I'm using the light side of the brush, to like pull it like fur into it from one direction and you can come back from the other direction. And here, that's how you blend it to look like fur. So here I don't want it to necessarily look smooth, but I get something that looks sort of furry like that. So depending on what your project is, if you've got like a lizard guy or a snake guy, whoever you're doing, practice doing that stuff with this stuff. Because if you just try to start your practical with this being the first time you use this, you're gonna have a really hard time. It's very different than the cream makeup. Um, it's awesome stuff, but it's a whole different unit, so. That's all I got to say.